Uh, I just want to welcome everybody this morning. Um, I know we're getting ready to start Thanksgiving week. Probably have some people traveling. Hopefully we have some folks visiting as well. And I'm, I'm certain we have some folks preparing to go hunting and all those fun things. So we're glad you're with us this morning. If you are visiting this morning, I encourage you to look at the back of your bulletin and you'll see an opportunity here to fill out some information for us. Right here you can see the visitor's blog if you can fill that out. If you have any prayer needs or anything that you'd like for us to pray for, for everyone, um, you can fill that out as well. This folds off nice and neat. You can tear it, tear it off and put that in the offering plate for us so that we can follow up. So if you're visiting or need uh, any prayer issues, anything you want us to do, Please fill that out and put it in the bulletin. Um, you can see, looking in your bulletin this morning, I do encourage you guys to read these. Take them home with you, look them over. There's a ton of information uh, from prayer needs and prayer concerns. And they're broken out into uh, a couple different categories. That information is also in the hallway over here uh, in, by the kitchen. So if you see something missing or you see somebody that we forgot about, Write it on the wall over there. Andy comes up each week. I come up. Dustin's up here. We're, we're looking for those changes. Um, you know, we've got birthday, reader, nursery schedules. All that information is in here, as well as the schedule for the coming week. So I really encourage you to look at that. Announcements. Uh, I'm just going to highlight. There's a lot in here, but uh, we continue to look for uh, nursery volunteers. We're still looking to hire some folks there. That's been a slow process. But we're adding some, some service times um, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then beginning the end of January, we're going to start meeting on Sunday evenings at 6.30. So giving you a heads up on that, but also say we're going to need some nursery volunteers during that time as well. Uh, we're continuing with the poinsettia orders. If you haven't done so, those envelopes are on the side table in the narthex. So read that and take a look at that. The Deaconess Ministry is still collecting items for the Humane Society. That information is in the bulletin and right outside the doors here. So take a look there. Countdown to Christmas, I mentioned see Katie. If you have um, a singing or musical gift that you would like to put a video and share, she's going to post that as an advent throughout the month of December. So we'd like to do that. Night of Bethlehem, Night in Bethlehem, sorry, it's coming up. Uh, Saturday, December 4th. We still have some open uh, things out there that we need some help with. Diana uh, is going to ask that everyone, anybody that's interested or anybody that has signed up already, um, if you'll stay just for a few minutes after church today, and again next Sunday, she just wants to organize um, that and talk about. There's several things we still need to help with, food, some different things with they're going to need help with tearing down and getting the sanctuary set up uh, on the 4th. They need some help with canopies and just volunteers. There are stations in this event, and so they'll need people at each station. It's a, a really good event, so I encourage you to uh, stay after church and meet with Diane on that today and again next Sunday. Uh, and moving on, we have uh, a message of thanks in there from Linda Walker. It's nice to see you here again this week. Um, so we want to continue to pray for Linda and, and uh, her family. Um, but there's a note there for all of you. The mission group is still, um, is that still going on? I don't know, Jan. Are, they st are we still collecting food or is that finished for the disabled pets? We're still collecting. Okay. The way that reads, it's every week. I just wanted to make sure. So we're still collecting food out here for the disabled veterans, and we want to make sure that we continue to do that. And thank you uh, for what you've done so far. That's gone quite well. Uh, one last thing that I want to bring to your attention is this insert that you see in your bulletin. Okay, this one is specific to a Bible study that we're going to do on Sunday nights, beginning next Sunday night. And it's called The Heart That Grew Three Sizes, which should give you a giveaway that it's about the Grinch. So we're going to, we're going to follow the story of the Grinch uh, and, and apply that to our Christmas advent as we roll into the holidays. 
That should be a lot of fun. In the same advance, we're not picking on anybody. Nobody has to uh, volunteer that they are already Grinch. Not making eye contact with anybody. But this should be a lot of fun. And it's um, it's the same material. We'll start all together, but then we'll break apart you know, into the kids and the youth and the adults. But it's the same program. We'll all go through it together. It'll be a really good time. So lots of things happening, as always. Uh, a few changes. If you if you heard me there say we're going to in Sunday, in, sorry, in the new year, we're going to resume Sunday evening services. And the intent of those services, as well as this one, very important. Our intent is outreach. We need to be more evangelical. We need to be evangelizing and spreading the good news. So the intent of our Sunday night services is going to be edification and evangelism. So the, the point over the next four weeks, obviously this is going to be fun. Bring somebody with you. Invite somebody that doesn't know God, doesn't know Jesus, or just doesn't have a church family. Uh, and the same thing as we move into next year with Sunday nights. Just want to put the period on that. Any other announcements or anything that a lot of times everybody brings me stuff at the last minute. Did I miss anything? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity that we have as a church family to worship you freely. I thank you for the abundance which you've blessed us. Lord, as we enter into a week of thanksgiving, we should be reminded to be thankful every week. But during this week, let us just take pause. I pray that it will start today with this service. That we will focus ourselves on you and we will give thanks. Lord, be with this service today and all those participating that your message would come through. Be with those here listening, Lord, that they would hear you. We pray thankfulness and we pray with gratitude. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name.
So as I ask the ushers to come and receive our morning's offering, I just want to share this verse. Dr. Carico preached on this a few weeks ago, but it's appropriate. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves the cheerful giver.
baptized, I didn't do that at the beginning. You know, as as we as I transition now into the sermon, well, and, and the things that we're thankful for, I, I'm thankful, and I'm going to talk about friends because that's I think what's really on my heart this this year and this week in particular. But and I'm thankful for people who share their gifts for God. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. And I'm thankful that you reached out to us. Um, we pastors need minister to, and you including us in that um, minister to us this week. And so thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you for sharing. So I've talked a ton about Thanksgiving already, and you know it's here. I don't know where the year is going. It's hard to believe that. Um, it's Thanksgiving week. And, and I was going to joke, you remember Thanksgiving, right? It's that holiday that's in between pre-Christmas and Christmas. <laughs> remember when Thanksgiving was its own holiday? Um, we really didn't do anything until for Christmas till after. Um, wow. But it is what it is, right? So my question this morning is, you know, what are you thankful for? As we enter this week, you know, we're going to be busy. We all have different things going on in our lives. It's going to affect our perspective and put different focus on different things. Um, God's blessed us in so many ways. and Of course, we need to always be thankful for Him above everything else and thankful for all the blessings that He's given us. But what are we thankful for? I've been for weeks now talking about be, being more focused on Him, His plan for us, His blessings in our lives. So what are we thankful for? I'm, I'm thankful for a myriad of blessings. When I count my blessings. I'm thankful for a God who loves me and is forgiven. I'm thankful for my salvation in Christ. I'm thankful for an amazing wife who had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. I'm thankful for my children. Garrett and Emily and Connor and Haley and Graham, Kate and my angel son, John David. I'm thankful for my parents and my grandparents. They're all now in heaven, which just puts more focus on God, more focus on salvation, doesn't it? I'm thankful for my amazing in-laws. I'm thankful for my sister, for my brother-in-law, my two brother-in-laws, my nieces and nephews, extended families, and huge families, extended families, tons of cousins. Just an incredible blessing to have that kind of family. I'm thankful for this opportunity that God put in front of me so long ago that I ignored I'm thankful that He finally brought me where I'm supposed to be. I'm thankful that I'm serving in this church. I'm thankful for each one of you. I'm thankful for what God's doing in your life and what you're allowing Him to do in this church through you. We're all in different places there. I'm thankful for my staff. I'm thankful for my ministry chairs and all those committee members, everybody that participates and gets involved. People who volunteer and serve using their gifts in the way that God calls you to use them. I could talk for the rest of that hour just listening to the things that I'm really thankful for. But you get the point, right? We're blessed. The thing is, when we roll it all together in this one overreaching thing for which I'm thankful. I'm thankful for friends. And I'm blessed to count so many of you as friends. This morning's scripture is from Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 9 through 12. If you'll turn with me. This pericope, this section in the book of Ecclesiastes is titled The Value of a Friend. Verse 9 starts, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. 
But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will stay warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And I pray that you would bless this reading of your word. Now I ask that your spirit would open the ears and hearts of those who need to hear. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So yeah, I am thankful for friends. And I have a ton of friends. And, and I've, I've just, you know, I'm that kind of guy that, I, I've, there's really blurry lines between acquaintances and friends because I just, I kind of genuinely love everybody I meet. And I attract some interesting people. And I'm just so grateful and thankful for those that I call friends, those that I can count as really good friends. You might remember that I recently preached from Ecclesiastes and was talking about Solomon's wisdom in these books that are attributed to him. Song of Solomon, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. I mentioned then that in the time that the book, the Song of Solomon was written, that would represent Solomon as a, as a young king. He was young, he was viral, energetic, and just full of zeal for God. He was on fire. And Proverbs seems to represent Solomon in his mature years as king. A little later in life, he was at the height of his uh, literary output, what he was writing, his uh, inquisitiveness and in terms of science and how things work. Just his, just his status as king was at its peak. And then in Ecclesiastes, what we see is, uh, call it his golden years, or his reflective time, the sunset time. He's looking back and he's summarizing everything that he's experienced, everything that he's learned. If you remember, he had drifted away. He had, he had taken his focus off of God. And he suffered for it. And then he learned these hard lessons. And he came back to God. And here, throughout this whole book, he's sharing with us what he's learned. And that, it's important. You know, Proverbs, that's what it means. Little bits of wisdom. He gave us a whole book of those. In Ecclesiastes, I feel like it's, it's more seasoned. And it's good to have that context as you're reading through anything in this chapter. Or in this book. But today, when we're talking about friends. And, you know, this is applicable probably to any type of relationship that you would have, friends or otherwise. Verse 9 starts, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Well, we, we often talk about two being better than one. We get that. Right? We talk about it a lot, probably more so in marriage, but it can be applied to any, any partnership. So it's not limited to marriage. This idea of two better, being better than one uh, can be applied to any partnership and in any aspect of our lives. It's not to mean that uh, being alone is negative, right? We have to learn to thrive and be alone. We have to learn to find joy and trust our hope on our own. But that's just not how God intended us to be. He made us to be in community with other people. So when you add another person to your life, the situation is usually improved. It's usually better. Better being the key word. Solomon is stating that a better way, a more fruitful way to live is in community with other people. That's how God makes. And that was clear from the very beginning. In Genesis 2.18, God said, and the Lord said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make him a helper comparable to him. So right from the beginning, it was clear that we're to be in community. Solomon goes on to describe different aspects in life, when specifically when two are better than one. Work, moments of weakness, for basic survival. 
in verse 10. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he has no one to help him up. In verse 11, again, if two lie together, if they lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Now, that's not a physical reference. It's not, in, it's not meant in an intimate way. What Solomon is saying, it's about huddling together against the cold, right? It's about combining. It's a metaphor for combining our strengths in order to face the elements, to face the challenges of this world. And in verse 12, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand it, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now these, these are just generalities that Psalm has given us, just generalities of life's circumstances. But that's because this simple truth, this simple wisdom, it can be applied to any part of our lives, anything that we're going through. God created us to live in community with one another. It, it's not just about safety in numbers. It's that numbers, partners, relationships actually bring us in more fruitful, more successful growth. When we combine our strengths, when we combine our creativity, our gifts and talents, our ambitions, Synergy happens. Synergy. When we combine all of that effort together, and then we also remember to include God, to be focused on God, we get unity. We can have synergy, and we can improve and make a situation better together. But when we add God in, we get unity. That's that's the comment of threefold court. He's talking about two is better than one. In the very last phrase, he says a threefold court. What did he mean? Why not a twofold court? He's talking about two is better than one. The threefold court is the two of us plus God. It's simple. And it's just so simple and clear. Now, in a very literal sense, I thought, well, twofold and threefold cord. Let's get literal. When you combine two pieces of cord together, it doesn't just double the strength of the cord. It's stronger than two pieces of cord individually. If you add them together, it's exponential, not linear. The strength increases more than a magnitude of two. When you add a third, it does the same thing. But something really cool happens if you just put those three cores together. That happens, right? You increase, you increase the strength. If you braid them together, you intertwine them. They're not just together. They're actually creating friction. You pull them. They're touching, right? And it increases the strength even more. So a core, he didn't say a threefold strand, right? Break it together with God. It's just an incredible visual image that Solomon gave us. So in the context of these verses, I wanted to share that because I'm thankful for friends. This is a script. It's a definition of how that makes my life better and why I should be thankful. But furthermore, in the spirit of it being Thanksgiving week, I just wanted to share a few other things with you. So I want to spend just a few minutes talking about the stewardship of Thanksgiving, this idea of stewardship and Thanksgiving. So what, what does that mean? Um, in Psalm 118, verse 1, it reads, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. The stewardship of Thanksgiving. A Roman philosopher by the name of Lucius Seneca is credited with this saying. He says, He who receives a benefit with gratitude, so if you receive a benefit with gratitude, he repays the first installment on his debt. That's a powerful quote. 
Simply by receiving a gift with thanks, you've already made the first payment back. Think for a minute. You've been on both sides of that equation. Have you ever given somebody something and they didn't act grateful? They didn't say thanks or didn't even act like they cared that you gave it. Right? That's receiving something. No, no payment. But the second you hand somebody something and you give them, and you can tell they're excited that they're grateful, that they're thankful, and they even say it. This quote makes a lot of sense. They made their first installment on the debt. And thank goodness in God's case and God's grace, that debt's paid. There is no debt. First, when we look at this verse, Psalm 118, who gives thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. First, we're giving the object of our thanks. What are we thankful for? Oh, or who are we thankful to? Oh, give thanks to the Lord. As James reminds us, every good, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And it comes down from the Father of lights. God owns all things. Everything comes from God. So who are we thankful for? to? We're thankful to God. Secondly, the verse tells us we are given the, the reason, reasonableness of our thanks. Why are we thankful? We're thankful for He is good. God is good. God is good. The abundance of His blessings flow from His graciousness. The graciousness of His character. God's character as well. God is good. Third, we're given His motivation. What's our motivation for being thankful? His mercy endures forever. We talked last week about our hope is eternal. Who are we thankful to? God. Why are we thankful to Him? Because He is good. What's our motivation for being thankful to Him? Because He is eternal. So what about our thanksgiving, our gratitude? Our gratitude is a grace. It's a gift. It's a grace gift from God. And like every other gift that He gives us, we have to choose whether or not we're going to use it. Gratitude is a gift, and we have to choose. Are we going to take it or leave it? Are we going to use it, or are we going to neglect it? We have to choose to be grateful. We have to choose to share gratitude. So that choice is in all good things. Is any resource from God. We have a responsibility. And that responsibility is stewardship. Stewardship of thanksgiving. So I want to quickly give you three things that we have to do in stewardship. Stewardship of thanksgiving. First, it has to be constant. Our thanksgiving should be constant. We need to be thankful all the time. We should be giving thanks in the good times. We should be giving thanks when things are prosperous, when we're successful. We should be giving thanks in difficult times, times of adversity, times of loss. We should be giving thanks during times of doubt and uncertainty because we know, we learned last week, that our hope is in Christ. We know hope. We're hopeful. So we give thanks for that constantly. So first, we should give thanks constantly. Secondly, our thankfulness, our thanksgiving should be discerned. We need to be thankful for all of our blessings, for all the things that we've learned, the good, the bad, the uncertainty, everything that has taught us is a blessing. All of those lessons Difficult or not, our blessing. True thanksgiving remembers the best of the past. When we're thankful, we remember the past. True thanksgiving, we can see the blessings of today. We can look around us and we can discern what's good, how we are learning. And instead of complaining about things, we should be thinking, wow, what an amazing day to be alive. What an amazing problem to have. 
This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Most importantly, true thanksgiving just prepares us. It strengthens us for a future where we can learn to be thankful. So it needs to be constant. It needs to be discerned. And it needs to be vocal. We need to say it out loud. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Psalm 107, verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If we're really thankful, then we should say so. Simple enough. Right? When I was traveling for a living, um, and on the occasions that I had the opportunity to travel internationally, and when you're coming back in through customs, the customs agent would always ask, do you have anything to declare? Now, what he meant was, did you buy anything that you have hidden in your luggage that you want to tell me about before I find it? Because you have to pay taxes on that. So the right answer is yes, if you have something, by the way. But he's asking, do you have something to declare? No. Think about that in a spiritual way. Think about it spiritually. Do you have anything to declare? Do you? Do you have anything in your heart? Anything in your spiritual luggage that you need to declare? Then declare it with thanksgiving to God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Let us declare our thanksgiving. Let us be thankful. Let our thanksgiving, let our stewardship of thanksgiving be constant and discerning, and loud, vocal. Let them hear it. Let them know it. Let us be thankful for this incredible world, the beauty and magnificence of the world we live in. Let us be thankful for the blessings of where we live and our freedom to worship Him. Let us be thankful for our freedom in Jesus Christ. For the freedom that comes from knowing Him. In God's grace. I'm thankful for friends. And I'm thankful for my friends in Christ. What are you thankful for? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that this week as we enter into Thanksgiving, pray that we would be thankful every day, constantly, that we would understand and be able to see with your spirit dwelling in us, that we would see the, the blessings all around us. Let us offer you a heart of thanks, thanksgiving and praise in everything we do. Teach us to be joyful, to pray continually and to give thanks no matter what our circumstances. We accept them and we accept your will. Our focus is on you. And our thanksgiving is for you. We long to bring you pleasure daily. Break the power of the enemy around us and in our lives. We just let us defeat him through our constant praise, our constant thankfulness our discerning and our vocalizing that thanksgiving, our praise. Change us. Transform us. Give us an outlook and attitude that's one of joy and contentment with our present, with our past, and for our future. We thank you for all the blessings of this life. And we thank you for the certainty and the hope that comes from knowing you. Lord, this morning, if someone here needs to know you, to know your hope, if they need to know your grace, Lord, I pray that you move on their heart to accept you, to ask you into their, their heart as their Lord and Savior, that the Spirit would move on them. Lord, if there's someone here that just needs 
to be more focused on you. To see the blessings that you bring into their life, Lord. Help them make a decision this morning just to reach out to you. You're right there. Lord, someone here is just looking for a church family. A place to serve. A place to show their gratitude and gratefulness for the gifts they've been given. To serve. To evangelize. To edify. And to just worship you as part of this church family. Lord, we pray that you would help any of these make that decision right now. And Lord, that they would declare it in thankfulness that they would stand up and come to the altar to declare that decision for you as a witness to those around. Lord, we're thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If anybody's made it this morning, I'd ask you as always to come and pray with me. As we sit. Please stand and join me in singing our hymn meditation. I have decided to follow Jesus.